Hello guys, it is the Mac Creation and today we're going to be taking a look at the PlayStation Vita. So I haven't done many technology videos for some time but now I'm getting back onto it and here we have the PS Vita. Now to start off with I thought it would be quite interesting if we put this aside a, uh, another Sony product just to give you guys uh, you know, kind of an idea of how far the PlayStation Portable line has come. So first off, here we have the original PSP. So this is the original PlayStation Portable, uh, the one that takes the UMD cartridges or CDs, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a, it was a very, very good handheld gaming system back in the day. But now this has succumbed to many different um, platforms from Sony. And the latest one is this, the PS Vita. Now you can have a look and you can see the size comparison right there. So on top of each other, and if we look at them from the tops and from the bottom, you can see there are a slight difference in size. This one is slightly smaller. Obviously, we've got the smaller screen on this, and we have the capacitive touchscreen on the PS Vita. Now, the PS Vita comes in two different versions. We have the Wi-Fi model and the 3G model. This is the Wi-Fi model because I'm not really bothered about the 3G kind of whole aspect. Um, so I just thought I'd go ahead and get this one just because it's cheaper. And I don't have to pay a uh, monthly fee for fi for the free G service. Um, specification wise, um, it has an internal memory of 512 megabytes. Uh, RAM is 128 megabytes. And uh, dimensions wise, it's 182 by 18.6 by 83.5 millimeters. And that's the width and the height and the depth. Uh, approximate weight is. 260 grams uh, for all you English people out there. That's uh, our system of measurements. Uh, we've got a five inch touchscreen, it is capacitive, which is um, you know much better. Capacitive and resistive touchscreens, I mean, there's no point going into detail in them, but you know the differences. Capacitive is so much nicer to use, and I will say that the uh, touchscreen on this is very nice and very flowing, and uh, it's really nice to play, at, play with them actually. As you can see, I've got a game on here at the moment. Uh, we were playing a bit of a <clears throat> Wipeout. This is a game that comes with the uh, PlayStation Vita. It's kind of like a, I wouldn't call it a demo, but it's a game that you get with it. Um, differences in between this and the original PlayStation Portable are basically just, you know, tech specs and the look. I mean, it still keeps the same sort of form factor and shape as the original PlayStation Portable, as you can see again. We'll just put them next to each other again. This, it still has a similar sort of look to it. The only differences to note are the uh, D-pad and up and down arrows are slightly smaller on the PS Vita and also there are two analog sticks on the PS Vita now and they are actually more analog sticks whereas the um, PlayStation Portable only had this weird little, well I don't even know what you call this, it, but it's not really an analog stick, it's more of just a rotational pointing device, god knows what you want to call it. Um, but I do really like the PlayStation Vita. It is very nice in the hand. I wouldn't say it is as nice as the Xbox 360 controller or PlayStation 3 controller, but it certainly is up there uh, ergonomic wise. Back of the con uh, the uh, handhold gaming device, we have um, these little rubber pads here, which are obviously for you know ergonomics. And then the back here, this very glossy back plate, is actually a touchscreen uh, surface. It doesn't really come into play yet because there aren't any games out which support it really. There are a few applications which do, but I don't actually have them. Uh, this does have two cameras. It has one on the front here, that little dot there, and also one on the back, that thing there. But they are only VGA and I really don't see the point in using them. The quality is very poor, it's very noisy, and it's just really not up to scratch. But if you want to take some quick photos, then there is no harm in doing so. Um, Application-wise, it is very flowing, as I said earlier. Um, some features which are quite nice is the Skype application. Now, obviously, you've got the camera on the top and the back, sorry, on the front and the back, and that can be quite handy actually. Um, I've done Skype on this and it, it works quite well. It depends how good your Wi Fi connection is, but generally, it works quite well. Now, gameplay on the PS Vita is uh, another thing which is, um, you know, important. Obviously, this is a gaming device, and um, that is something which comes into concern. Now, I've got FIFA football in here. And um, we'll just start this up. Now, the graphic-wise, it is very nice. Um, I don't know whether it's better 
or on par with the iPad and other Android devices, but it is definitely something to uh, take note of. The graphics and the uh, frame rate on the PlayStation VR are very, very nice. Um, I'm not going to show you too much about this PS Vita because there's no need to. I just really wanted to uh, show you it and say what I think. And my personal opinion is this is a really, really nice handheld gaming device and probably the best one out there at the moment. It definitely knocks out uh, Nintendo's op offerings on the uh, handheld game platforms. So we have FIFA Football here. Now, I'm not going to really show you any gameplay. Uh, what I will show you, though, is the buttons and the interface and how this PS Vita works. So you have your power button on the top right there. Top left, sorry. Uh, PS Vita. Now, that little slot there, if I just open this up to show you. Let me get my thumb in there. This is where your game cartridges are held. And that is where, if I take that out, this is the FIFA Football uh, PS Vita game cartridge. Now, these are very similar in size to the SD cards of today. So, if you're wanting to see what this is in a size comparison, this is very similar to the SD cards that you use in your cameras and camcorders. So, that just goes into the top of the device there, and it works exactly the same as the SD card does. You just push it in and it locks in, like so. You've also got another slot here, um, and I'm not sure what this actually does, but it has a port in it. Uh, some sort of input or output right there, I'm not too sure, um, but I will find out and put that in the description below. Uh, we have a volume rocker up and down here, very similar to the original one on the PS port, PlayStation Portable, except from that was down here. Obviously, I've gone over the uh, typical buttons. You have your PlayStation Home button, you press that, it takes you back to your home page, and it's very similar interface and layout to a smartphone. And they've ba they've obviously done this just to you know keep in with the uh, with the trend at the moment and the most popular variety of interface and it works very well works very similar actually if you hold down for example the photo if you go back sorry if you hold down the uh, application um, you can drag them around and place them where you like very similar to that of an iPhone or an Android uh, in your own customization of the device now retail wise these are quite expensive. Uh, you're looking at around £260 for the cheapest one at the moment and that is for a Wi-Fi version and not for the 3G. With the 3G obviously you're going to have to go for um, all the uh, data packages and all that. But overall the PlayStation Vita is a very nice device and if you're looking into getting one and you're upgrading from a PSP Go or even the PSP Original or the uh, PSP2 then I definitely definitely recommend going for this because it's just a completely different package with the touchscreen and all that other good stuff. Thanks for watching guys, uh, really appreciate all the support and if you'd like to like my video, comment if you will, answer any, I will answer any questions that are needed and uh, I will see you guys in my next video.